Another day at the office. Let's hope it's going to be a productive one. Maybe there's some technology that can help me with that. So this is a dry sensor EEG. Could a study of my brain waves make me more productive? Treya Zam's company Mindplay certainly thinks so. This line here is raw electrical right. activity. I'm going to wear this brain monitor through my working day. What else have we got in the program? During exciting uh, well, meetings. That's pretty scary. Important yeah. phone calls. <laughs> Even when I go to get my lunch. We'll find out later what the results are. When it comes to productivity in factories, it's easy enough to work out how you measure it. And boosting it can be as easy as just taking away people and adding machines. But how do you make anyone who works in an office, an economist say, more productive? You know, better technology tends to increase the amount that we can produce per person. So, you know, if I work with better software, better computers, I'm likely to be more productive. If a factory worker is working with a better machine, they're likely to be uh, more productive. So that's 11.30 on the 28th. I'll see you then. Bye. Well, here's another trend. We're all producing vast amounts of communications data in the office. Telephone calls, emails, chats, messages of all kinds. What if we could analyse that and learn some lessons about productivity. Well, this company is using artificial intelligence to do just that. You have telephony data, that's phone call data, that's email data, that's chat. Data. The Havox monitors communications by bank workers, mainly to spot any unlawful or unethical activity. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> but now it wants to take this product further, using artificial intelligence to assess whether your communications are productive. It would go through chats and understand are you friendly in that particular discussion uh, with the client or are you friendly with your colleagues and employees. So it's able to use content of communications to make inferences about what it means uh, for relationships between people, what it means for the topics of discussion between those people. It all feels a bit big brother. In our personal lives we're actually giving away all this data for free to companies like Facebook for example. So when it comes to workplace all of a sudden, everybody is so upset about the fact that the company is going to use that data to make more money or to improve performance or to improve happiness around the workplace. Please put on the virtual reality headset. But maybe all this pressure to be more productive is going to stress us out. This pod provides a relaxing, multi-sense experience. Wearing a virtual reality headset, I'm taken out of the noisy city to a peaceful landscape. I can even smell my surroundings. Why, though, would an employer pay big money for this? It's not that expensive, because you see these days um, a lot of people are getting stressed out, they get burnouts, and they don't show up to work uh, any longer, or they don't perform well, and that is really, really costly. But enough relaxation, let's find out what that brain monitor says about me. How productive, for instance, am I in meetings? For the first eight to seven to ten minutes of the meetings, you were very highly engaged, and after that it's interesting that you have a slow tapering off of attention and now that could be because you become less involved in the meeting or it could be because the meeting moves on to a subject you're less interested in. Sorry, what were you saying? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's the wider lesson that this technology can give companies about productivity? If we can train ourselves through understanding our own deficiencies or areas of improvement required, we can make ourselves better at managing attention, better at managing stress and therefore ultimately more productive throughout the day. Well, I think it's been a productive day, but there's one thing I still need to do. Yes, yet another meeting.